In this video tutorial, I want to show you a feature in the more recent versions of PowerPoint called PowerPoint add-ins. And it's a feature that a lot of people I think just overlook, but you really shouldn't. There are some wonderful tools that you can add and build into your version of PowerPoint that you can use over and over again. So let's take a look at this great feature. And you'll find your PowerPoint add-ins by going to the Insert tab. When you click on it, you'll get the Insert ribbon. And there in the Add-ins group, you should see Store and My Add-ins. Now, if you don't see that, you probably have an older version of PowerPoint that may not have the Add-ins feature. But if you do have that, you're in luck. And let's get started learning how to use it. The first time that you go to your add-ins, you can click on it to see a list of the add-ins that are installed into your own version of PowerPoint, but chances are that there's nothing there. You can see I've installed a few, but if you want to get some add-ins of your own, you can just go here to Store and click, and it looks like it's suggesting a few add-ins for me. So I could choose to add those into my version of PowerPoint. Also, there are categories. You can go to the best apps of the year. You can go to visualization category to get visualization add-ins. There's editor's picks, productivity, education, and more. So I hope you'll check these out and see what there is to see and the wonderful add-ins that you can put into your own version of PowerPoint. In addition to that, you could search. So I'm curious as to whether there are games add-ins. And I do a search for games, and it looks like there are a couple. So that's kind of fun. I'm interested in this word game, so I'll click Add. And now that word game add-in should be added here into my add-ins list. And there it is. It looks like it's still loading, but eventually it'll show up there. And in this case, it shows up also on the slide. I'm going to undo that in the upper left corner. And let's look at three of my favorite PowerPoint add-ins. The first one that I'd like to highlight is called Picket Free Images. If you click on that, once it's installed as one of your add-ins, you get a panel that opens up here on the right, and you get a search box that you can search for images that you can pull into your presentation. Now, one thing I like about Picket Free Images is these are generally really high quality, beautiful images that you can use. And Picket does a good job of finding just images that have the Creative Commons sharing options so that you can reuse these images without worrying too much. You can see there are some Picket collections that you can browse through. You could even select a category if you want to get images specific to a certain topic that you might be working on. But most often, I just do a search. I need a picture of a cat, desperately, for my presentation on eclipses. I think that's the perfect image I need. So we'll go with this one. I just click on it. I click Insert, and the image is added to my PowerPoint presentation. Then I can resize it if I need to. I can rotate it, whatever. Yes, I know that we can already insert online pictures and do a Bing image search, but I like these picket-free images. There's some really good quality ones in there, and it's another source to go to. I'm going to X out of that, and now I'm going to go to a second add-in that I'd like to share with you, and that is Pixton Comic Characters. If you're not familiar with Pixton.com, it really is an amazing tool, and someday I'd like to do a video about it. But in the meantime, I'll show it just as an add-in into PowerPoint. Let's say on a new slide here, I want to make a comic. This Pixton add-in is perfect for that. And here we have some instructions. You can just click Next through those instructions to learn how to use it. But basically, it gives you a few characters to choose from. All right, I'll select this character here. Next, you pick an outfit for the character and a pose. Next, you decide if you want a speech bubble or not. I'll go with yes, I do want a speech bubble. Finally, you can enter optional text. There's the solar eclipse. And then I click Insert Character, and I've got this Pixton character inside of PowerPoint. So this is a fun and simple way to add some comic characters into your PowerPoint presentations. I think it's great. Now, if you have a Pixton account, look what you can do. You can click on My Comics and sign into your account. Give me a minute to do so, and I'll show you what you can do with that. Okay, now that I've signed in, my comics appear here that I've made on Pixton.com, and I can just click on a particular comic, and then I can either insert the entire comic or a panel at a time. Okay, let's look at the final PowerPoint add-in that I want to focus on in this presentation, and that is QR for Office. 
When you click on QR for Office, you get a panel that opens up, and you can use this panel to create a QR code. If you're not familiar with QR codes, you should check them out. You can do some nice things with them. Basically, people scan them with their phones, and the QR codes take them to a certain website or other resource. And they're perfect for PowerPoint because you can just put those up in a PowerPoint slide, and the students or the audience can scan them, and it takes them to additional resources, or even to an online copy of the the PowerPoint presentation. So let's look at how to use this. First, you would select the kind of QR code that you want to make. Is it HTTP or HTTPS? Is it a mail to? In other words, is it not really a website QR code, but rather an email QR code? Is it a telephone number, an SMS text number, geo or custom? The only one I'm going to focus on here is HTTP. And so all I would have to do is open up the internet and find a website that you would like to make the QR code to. Click to highlight the URL, copy, and then back in PowerPoint, I can just paste it in here. So I paste it in, but notice I thought it was going to be an HTTP URL. It turns out it's HTTPS, so I need to change this to HTTPS. I can adjust the color of the QR code if I want to. Generally, black is the best because you want to be able to read it from a far distance in some cases. Background, again, you're probably going to want it to be white, so I'll just stick with white. And then the size of the QR code, how big do you want it to be? If you're teaching or presenting in a big lecture hall or an auditorium, you're going to want it to be pretty much as big as possible. And then just click insert and that quickly you've got a QR code inside your PowerPoint presentation. This really is a very convenient add-in. So the main point of this tutorial was just to let you know that there is an add-in store inside of PowerPoint, and I hope you find all sorts of wonderful add-ins there that you like. But in addition, I did want to share those three of my favorite PowerPoint add-ins. Picket Free Images, Pixton Comic Characters, and QR for Office. I hope you found the video to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for another video from me at least every Monday.